Hello. Today I'll be going through a code pattern that we call Infuse AI into your application. Now the point of this code pattern is to show you how to model and analyze data and then use it in an application. In this case we have a churn predictor where we want to look at customer risk of churn and we'll come up with a special targeted offer depending on that customer's risk. Now the code pattern will go through creating that model, deploying the model, and using it in this simple demo app. This code pattern is already published, so you can find it at developer.ibm.com slash infuse AI into your application. And here you'll be able to find other code patterns and tutorials. But of course, the code is public in public GitHub, so click on the Get the Code button and you can take a look at our repo. You'll see we're using the usual common open source tools, Jupyter Notebooks and Spark ML Library. This time I'm running them all under IBM Cloud Private for data. So you'll get to see a little bit of project management and how we run and ultimately deploy the model to be used via a web service using IBM Cloud Private for data. As always, we've included detailed steps. The idea is that you clone the repo and run this yourself. But we've included plenty of examples if you want to just read through it and see what we've done. For data, we're providing a CSV that combines customer demographics with customer trading activity. Now we want to pull this out of DB2 Warehouse, but first we've provided it as a CSV file in the GitHub repo. So what I'll do is I'll quickly create a table in DB2 Warehouse and we'll just load that CSV in there. I'll speed through this part of the demo because it's really easy to do in the user interface. But one thing to note is I'm not defining any of the columns. It's coming right out of the CSV file. It's taking the, the header row in the CSV to create them. And then next we'll take a look at how you add a data source, uh, in this case a remote data source via JDBC, and add that to a notebook. Next I'll create an analytics project. Now the project will contain the Jupyter Notebooks environment that we need, but in addition to the notebook, it'll also hold definitions of our data assets, and it will hold the model that we create. And then the whole project will be version controlled so we can create releases of the model by releasing the project. Now I'll add a data source to the project. A data source is just a JDBC connection to our database. So I'll say add data source, I'll fill in a little bit of information, including the credentials to the database so that we can connect to it within the project. You'll see how that works once we get into the notebook. I forgot to scroll down and create the data set, so I'll go back and edit this. and I can add the data set, that's just the table, so I reference, I give it a name and reference the schema and the table name. Now I, I'll save that. So the data source is a pointer to the database, the data set is a pointer to the table, and that's what I'll be loading into my notebook. Now let's add the notebook to the project. So within the project, I'll click on Assets, and there I can do an Add Notebook. I'll open up the notebook file, which is in my cloned repository that was included in our GitHub repo. And this is the notebook where we'll be training the model. We'll use some graphics with Brunel to come up with a hypothesis for what we should be predicting, and we'll create a prediction model that we can save to the repository. So here's our Jupyter Notebook, a combination of instructions and Python code. Now before we run this, the first thing we want to do is scroll down. We want to inject that data set here. So you click in the cell, you use the Find Data button, and under the remote listing, you'll see we have that merged customers data set that we created. So I'll click on insert to code and I can insert a Spark data frame right there. And you'll see the generated code allows me to access that and I get a Spark data frame. The second thing we have to do is you look at this variable df1. Sometimes that will be a different number. So in the following cell, we'll tweak that to assign df1 to df churn. df churn is the variable used in the rest of the notebook. And now we're ready to run it. I'm going to go ahead and just run all. So it will create the charts, it will create the model, and we can take a look at it as soon as it's done. The asterisks show which cells are running right now. 
and when they change to numbers the cells have completed. So it took less than a minute. I edited a little bit out. Um, now we're at the bottom and everything's run to completion. So let's go back up to the top and look through the notebook and see what we've done. Okay, so I mentioned that the notebook has the markdown text, the instructions uh, explaining what we're doing. It has Python code. I didn't mention the output. So now that we've ran the notebook, you can see the output. So df1.show shows a little bit about of that data set that was pulled in into the Spark data frame. Now we turned it into a pandas data frame and again here's the head call showing the top five. Mm -hmm. So you get a little peek at what's inside the data set. Now to show it graphically I'm going to use Brunel. You see that percent Brunel? That's cell magic to use this Brunel visualizations and you can see in that one line I describe a pie chart Here's another one line, a bit longer. This is marital status count and churn risk percentage. Now Brunel gives us some pretty nice graphics. You notice the tooltips especially are nice. I can just hover and see what percent of married customers have high, medium, and low churn risk. Now here's an even nicer chart, I think. Uh, this time I can look at it by total units traded. But again, if I glance at this, I'm not really sure how to predict whether someone's going to be high, medium, or low based on this data. So the next chart's the one that I found more interesting, churn risk percentage by days since last trade. Now here you see it goes up to 100%, it spread the data out, and if I look at this one I can see right in the middle, days since last trade around 12 and 14, medium risk. Clearly, once you get up to 15, 16 days, there's high risk of customer churn. And on the lower end, from like 12 and lower, there's a significant amount of gray there where it's lower risk. But the numbers are clearly mixed in that range. Um, in this case, I'm not sure what the zero data point means. But definitely, day since last trade looks like it influences whether someone is high, medium, or low risk of churn. So now let's use Spark ML library to create a predictor. So we're taking our data. We have categories, gender, status, homeowner. We have a lot of non-categorical -categor columns. So we're looking at days since last trade, dollars gained, dollars lost, um, largest, smallest transaction, units traded. So we know some of those influence it, so here what we're going to do is we're going to create vectors and then we'll use Spark ML random forest classification model. Now you see the code here, it takes very little code to create a random forest classifier. We just need to split our data up into, we're going to take a 70-30 split, so we will train on 70% and then we'll use the remaining 30 that we did not train on for the testing. So we run this code. We're doing the pipeline fit and training, and now we're going to transform and test and see the results. Now if I just take a look at a little bit of these results, just again the first five or six, you look at the churn risk label, or the, the column there, it says high, medium, low, and we look at the predicted label, high, medium, low. It looks like we did a pretty good job, and we can also see the probability shown there. So when we analyze these product results, we want to make sure that we're not overfitting. We want to make sure we're not getting too many false positives. Um, so we have some statistics now down below where we're going to look at this model and decide whether it's a good enough model for us to use or not. And the me measure you see here is where we took all that information and created a single number to look at called model precision. And you see that 93%. So again, it depends on exactly what your threshold for good enough is, but you know, at first glance 93% looks like a pretty good model. Now we can evaluate this again, we'll get an F measure of 93 and we can look at it by class, so we're looking at our three classes, high, medium, and low. Again, 90, 90, 77, pretty good prediction. The other thing that's interesting here is we can look at the feature importance. Now this chart shows See, days since last trade looked interesting to us, but that's the third most important. The most important features are realized gains or realized losses. So if you want to keep somebody, 
give them money. Make sure they're making money. If you want to lose them, let them lose money. They'll walk. So that's not too surprising, but it's nice to see it graphically and see how it turned out. We created another model here using Naive Bayes to see how it compares in it. 67%. Not nearly as good as the first one, so we're going to take the random forest model and save that to our repository. So here's our uh, save command that we, we're using here with IBM Cloud Private for Data. So now we've saved it. We're also going to save some CSVs for uh, batch scoring and evaluation of the model so we can continue to do that afterwards. And that's it for this notebooks work. Next we want to take a look at the saved model and how we can use it. Now let's try some online scoring to see how the model works. So we go back here to our project and now you'll see we have our notebook but we also have a model and in addition to our first data set those CSV files that we saved for evaluation and training are, um, are also there as assets. But let's go and try scoring with the model that we saved. So I'll just use this action menu and click on real-time score. You get this little UI and you see the input. Now we can, we have some values there, but you can change the gender, status, children, gains, losses, um, and click submit and you'll see the result, which is the prediction, is it high, medium, or low risk of churn? So this default one was pretty high risk of churn. You can see the pie chart or the bar chart. Now if I want to, I can try some different values. So if I just go edit this, change the losses to gains, and click submit, just a dollar gained, that's still high risk. Well, that's because it was 19 days since last trade. So let's go back to 12. That was sort of our middle. Now this customer is most likely medium risk of churn. If I play around a little bit, I go on the lower end of five, it's still medium. Let's see. If I say two days since last trade and $1,000 gained, low risk of churn. So we saw that a little bit in the chart, and then we saw later the most important features and how those features, mostly did you gain money or lose money, influence whether you're high or low risk of churn. But definitely the days since last trade were also is also an influencer. So you can try it out in this UI. But now what we want to do is we want to take this, we want to release this so we can actually use this model in one of our applications. Now I need to save and tag this release. So first what I'll do is I will commit and push all these changes. IBM Cloud Private for Data is integrated with uh, a Git repository. So you see all the changes I have here, including the model. Um, so I will commit that and then I will push it to the repository. So now I'll go into Projects, Analyze, Model Management, and here I can create a project release. Uh, the one you see there I, was something I was doing earlier, so I'm going to create a new one with Add Project Release. I'll name it, give it a route. I will specify the project that we're working on, which is my demo project, and the tag, which is the code that we just did a commit and push and tagged. So this is my project release. Using this project release, we're going to create a web service. So now that we've released the project, we'll add a web service. Once the web service is out there, we'll get an API tab where we can see the curl command that could be used to access this web service. In addition, on the README, I've described how you can use this in a, with a curl command. Now in our project, you can see we have a web service, but notice it's disabled. And if we look in deployments, we'll also see a deployment there, but it's also disabled. So in order to get this running, we have to um, go to the project release and launch that release. Now once we have an enabled deployment, we can go back and we can use that API tab. Again, we've got an endpoint there that we want. We have a token that we want to use, but also uh, in the UI here, you can test it. So now I can change some values, click submit, and see what the response is, and actually see the JSON that comes back from that REST endpoint. So here's our demo app. Now I ran the Python app on the command line. 
uh, I had to configure the endpoint and the token. You'll see the debug output running in the background where you can see the JSON being spit out. But basically this is very much like the online scoring. We put in some values and we got back the probability of churn class. But here, you notice it also suggests an offer for the customer. Again, the point was this would be part of a bigger app where we'd have some information about the customer and based on these metrics and demographics, we would go ahead and predict high risk, low risk, medium risk. And if it was high risk, we offer more incentive to try to keep the customer. In this case, it was high risk, so it was a bigger offer. So this is how you infuse AI into an app. We went through a lot with the notebook. We created a model, and now it's deployed so we can use it from an app.